nine, four, hit! Well, the University of Minnesota prepared me for my eventual career as a coach, um, really in, in a lot of ways, but uh, I never thought I would go into coaching. I was a business administration major. My plan was to play 10 years in the NFL, make a lot of money, start my own business, and, and work that way. I only played three years, and I didn't make a lot of money, uh, but my passion was coaching. But I learned a lot of things in school that, that helped me in, in terms of coaching. I never really thought about coaching until after I got to the NFL and, and Coach Noel, my, my coach with the Steelers, said, you know, you've got an aptitude for this, you've got a nose for the game, you can communicate well, this is something you could be good at. The first day I went to work as a coach for the Steelers and I went home, I couldn't wait to go back to work the next day and that's when I knew this is for me. Being in Super Bowl 41, coaching against Lovey Smith, first time uh, African American head coaches had been in the game, it, it was special to me. I was very proud of it. When, when I came into the National Football League as a player in 1977, there were seven assistant coaches, African American assistants in the whole league. No head coaches, no coordinators. Many teams didn't even have one African American on their staff. So to see that as a rookie player, uh, to hear my dad talk about Joe Lewis and Jackie Robinson. Uh, to, for me as a, a young man to watch Doug Williams win the Super Bowl a, a, as an African-American quarterback. And now to have people say, well, is this in the same category? I didn't really look at it that way. To me, it was just trying to help our team win. But a, a, after we won the game, and to stop and think about it and say, wow, you know, when, when I came in as a player at, at 21, did I think this moment was possible? Uh, I'd, I'd have to say no, I wouldn't have thought possible. Well, I have to look back at the people that, that went in, in front of me. Um, and again, I, I look back at my dad. Um, my dad, one of the, the most fond memories I have of that whole uh, Super Bowl trip and experience was President Bush uh, inviting our team to the White House. And I thought back to my dad uh, in 1951 uh, not being able to teach at the all-white school in Alexandria, Virginia. Uh, he had to teach at, at the black school. We landed at Reagan Airport and we're going to see the president. And I'm thinking, man, one generation later, my dad would be so proud of this to see his son walk into the White House. It was pretty special. All Pro Dad started out of a, a need that we had uh, when I was the head coach of the Buccaneers in 1996. Um, a couple of our assistant coaches uh, and I, we, we talked a lot about the time we were spending at work and how we weren't spending as much time with our kids as, as our dads had. How could we do it a little bit better? So we actually came to Family First trying to get some information. What could we do to be better dad? Uh, we, we decided to invite some dads out to practice and, and watch us practice, bring their kids. We thought we might have a couple of hundred. We ended up with 2,000 people that day. And we said, hey, we're on to something. Dads like football. If we can connect this uh, and, and make dads feel special about being a dad, uh, it can be good. Well, I, I look at all the people along the way who impacted me, and that, that's one of the things I thought about when I was up there holding the Super Bowl trophy a, a, as a, a head coach. Think of all the people who went into this moment, and it's people you know, who wouldn't even know uh, the impact they had just by a kind word or some encouragement at the right time. And uh, I, I just know that's so important to young people, that if, if we can just, through our foundation, give a little bit of encouragement at the right time, uh, who knows what, what Super Bowl trophy some young person's going to be holding up.